Quid pro quo. Episode 6 of Wednesday starts with Wednesday doing a ritual to summon Goody Spirit so she can help her master her powers. Her call to the dead is interrupted by Enid and someone throwing an anonymous letter under her door asking her to meet at Crackstone's crypt at midnight. Enid instincts on going along with Wednesday and it turns out to be a birthday surprise party for Wednesday. As they sing her happy birthday, she notices the writing on the old fireplace is the same as the writings burned on the school's lawn. She gets a vision and sees Goody warning her about Crackstone's impending visit. She asks Wednesday to seek a place in the vision and tells her that as a raven psychic she will have a solitary path which means she will end up alone unable to trust others. She also tells her they are running out of time. The next day, Wednesday is still not happy about her surprise birthday party and is acting cold towards thing. Enid tells her the party was her idea and gives her a birthday present along with the one her parents left. Elsewhere, Larissa visits the mayor and asks for his help tracking down the delinquents who left the burning message in her school. The mayor is happy to oblige and also tells her they are working on finding the person behind the recent attacks. He brings up the idea that it might be someone from her school and Larissa immediately warns him to stop entertaining such ideas. Back in school, Xavier tries to find out the vision Wednesday had in the crypt. Wednesday thinks he is the monster and refuses to divulge any information to her. He tells her that when she changes her mind and needs his help, she knows where to find him. On the other hand, Bianca spots Lucas doing his community work and he is wearing a bracelet from her mother's company. She tells him that the so-called self-help app is a fraud and tells him to delete the app. He asks her on a date later. They later meet up at the cafe and they seemingly get along well. Later, Wednesday runs into Dr. Kinbot when she visits Eugene. He is still in a coma and his moms ask the doctor to check up on him when they head home for a few days. She tries to get close to Wednesday but she is not looking for a free session so she leaves her. As the mayor continues his investigation, he receives the death certificate of Garrett's sister who supposedly drowned while overseas. He is suspicious of her death and wants to make sure it is not related to the recent attacks. While in town, Wednesday drops in at the cafe and Tyler invites her on a date to celebrate her birthday. She declines and says she has a tight deadline. She shows him the painting of the place that Goody asked her to find, but he doesn't know it. The sheriff comes in for his coffee and she tells him about the writing on the crackstone's fireplace. She visits Tyler and asks for his help finding the place in the drawing. He tells her it is the old Gates mansion and asks why she is asking. The next morning, Wednesday visits the mansion and sees the mayor leaving the house. She and Thing get into the boot of his car after overhearing his voicemail to the sheriff. He thinks he has figured out who is behind the attacks and asks to meet the sheriff at the cafe. He drives to the cafe, unaware that Wednesday and Thing are hiding in his boot. As he crosses the road, a blue Cadillac with no license plates hits him before driving off. Luckily, he is rushed to the hospital and might make it. Wednesday tells the sheriff that everything is linked to the Gates family but he doesn't believe her as he knows they are all dead. The principal is also not happy to hear that Wednesday has been caught up with a new situation and decides to put the school on a full lockdown and revoke off-campus privileges until further notice. Miss Thornhill comes to Wednesday to comfort her and gives her the Frankenstein book to cheer her up. She warns her that if she continues to defy the principal she might be expelled. The next morning, Wednesday calls Tyler and tells him that she has reconsidered his offer for a date. His dad hears the conversation and asks him to stay clear of Wednesday. She also tricks Enid to sneak out of the school and have a redo of her birthday party. They sneak out of the school and Tyler picks them up. He is disappointed as he thought they were going on a private date. Enid is disappointed as she thought they were going to have a girls' night out. She asks Tyler to take them to the Gates mansion. Meanwhile back in school, Xavier discovers that Wednesday snuck out and asks Thing to tell him where she went. In the spooky, old mansion, the three of them investigate the house and discover Laurel Gates' room has been cleaned. It seems like someone has been living there. Before they can investigate further, Enid and Wednesday hear Tyler screaming for help warning them about the monster. 
The monster chases Enid and Wednesday through the house and they find themselves in a basement. In the basement, they find the trophies the monster took from his victims. They don't have much time so Wednesday is forced to quickly look through before escaping. They get out of the house and circle back to find Tyler. They find him alive, but a bit bruised on his shoulder. Xavier also arrives at that moment and helps them with Tyler. They take him home and his dad is livid he is hurt. Wednesday takes him back to the house, but everything has been cleared out. There is no sign of the trophies or the monster. The sheriff thinks that she is lying and he is angry that she endangered his son's life. He forbids her from seeing Tyler again. The principal is angry that Wednesday ignored her warnings and violated the rules. Wednesday tells her about Rowan's mother's prophecy and shows her the painting. She asks for another chance to save the school and decides to give her one last chance. She goes to her room and finds Enid packing her things as she no longer wants to share a room with her. She is angry that Wednesday tricked her and nearly got her killed. She leaves the room and tells Wednesday to enjoy being alone. Wednesday admits that being alone in the room is not as fulfilling as she thought it would be. She sits down and looks at the old music box toy she took from Laurel's room and discovers photos taken by someone stalking her. Please guys subscribe the channel and thanks to watching.